I talked about muscle attachments throughout this lecture. Now let's take a deep dive into each section and appreciate their functions. If you remember the greater tubercle, over here there are three smooth and flat impressions present at the posterior superior aspect for the muscle attachments. If we go from superior to the inferior aspect, the muscles that attached at these impressions are the sit muscles, we have the supraspinatus, infraspinatus muscle and the teres minor muscle. The T over here is in a small letter because of the fact that we have the teres minor muscle and it will be very helpful for you to remember. Coming to the lateral aspect of the greater tubercle, we have the deltoid muscle covering it. This results in the normal rounded shape of the shoulder. On the lesser tubercle, there is an attachment point for subscapularis muscle. On the lateral end, the transverse ligament of the shoulder also attaches. The intertubercular sulcus consists of a lateral and a medial lip. The tendon of the pectoralis major muscle attaches on the lateral lip, also known as the crest of the greater tubercle, while the teres major tendon attaches on the medial lip. In addition, the tendon of latissimus dorsi attaches to the posterior aspect. An easy way to remember the relation of these muscles as they insert in the intertubercular sulcus is via the following mnemonic. Lady between two majors. The lady over here stands for the latissimus dorsi, while the majors will remind you of the teres major and the pectoralis major muscle. The deltoid inserts into the deltoid tubercle around the middle of the surface. From the distal part, the lateral portion of the brachialis muscle originates. Coming to the anterior medial surface of the humerus, it provides the attachment for the coracobrachialis muscle around its mid portion. Now, the triceps brachii muscle is attached by its medial head to the posterior surface and the lateral head is attached to the ridge in the proximal third. Coming to the distal end, the muscle attachments at the distal end dictate the movement of the anterior and the posterior compartments of the forearm. The medial epicondyle provides the attachment of superficial muscles of the anterior forearm. These muscles are the flexor carpi ulnaris, palmaris longus, flexor carpi radialis, and pronator teres muscle. Sometimes it can be difficult to remember if the common flexor tendon is medial or lateral. Here's a mnemonic that can help you out. FM radio, where you'd remember that the flexor is on the medial side. So the common flexor origin is on the medial aspect. If you remember in the last section, we discussed that there is an impression on the lateral epicondyle which provides attachments to the seven muscles. These include the brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorium, extensor digiti minimi, extensor carpi ulnaris, and the enconius. All these seven muscles are a part of the superficial group of the posterior compartment of the forearm. Collectively, you can view the attachments over here.